Hi everybody, I'm Dave Dunbar with General Pipe Cleaners. Now occasionally our customer service department gets questions about how do you actually do routine maintenance on a mini router power feed with a mini router XP or a mini router. Now the power feed is a really good device. It's good for safety and also helps you use the machine more fully. However, there is routine maintenance involved and every once in a while we'd like you to actually open this up, do what I'm going to do on this video, clean it and grease it put it back together again. Routine maintenance is always good for the long-term use of the machine. So how do we do that? So first off, you want to get your power feed looking like what I have in my hands right now. You want to take it off the machine, take it off the arm, take the guide tube off the front so that what you have looks very similar to what I'm holding in my hands right now. Okay, And then we'll go to the next step. The power feed is actually a very simple device, and we make it easy to repair, easy to get into and easy to repair. It's just held together by snap rings for the, for the mini router power feed. So you will need a couple different sizes of snap ring pliers, okay? And you'll probably need some replacement snap rings as well. I'll show you why. So first, let's take the faceplate off. That's the first step to, uh, to getting this apart. You just take the snap ring that's holding the face plate off. Put that down there. We'll talk about that in a second. Now the whole face plate comes off the, the unit. Okay, This is the one piece that has the arm on it that you use to control the forward and reverse of the power feed uh, when it's guiding the cable in and out of the drum. Now inside, you notice we have three rollers. Okay, Now, I've already taken the snap ring and the washer that were in this roller, I've taken them out. But all that's holding them in basically is a snap ring and a roller. The roller is designed to push the carrier with the ro roller bearing a little closer in so it makes better contact with the cable. So you take that snap ring off, that washer is there, and it just slides right out. Now, this is a carrier, it has a swing pin on the top, and this roller bearing is designed to actually make contact with the cable and basically guide it in and out. Okay? By changing the direction or pitch of the roller, it changes the direction and speed of the cable as it's coming in and out of the drum. If this wears, or if the bearing fails, dirt gets into the bearing, so it's not rolling anymore freely, like this, like it is right now, then you'll find that your power feed, instead of being a power feed, will become a vice. It'll actually hold the cable and it won't allow it to come in and out. So changing this whole apparatus, which can get very dirty in use, can be key to keeping this working properly. Now, where this is located, it's going to scrape all the dirt and all the grime and all the other stuff that's down the drain off into the power feed as it's coming back into the drum. It's not going to look this, this clean when you see it next, right? So you can take it out. You can make sure that you clean it off. You can grease it. If everything is operating fine, fine. Just put it back in. But taking it apart to this point so that you can grease the outside of the carrier inside the... Um, the part of the power feed where it, it, it sits, its seat, is very crucial because this has to be able to rotate uh, freely. If it doesn't, it will bind up the power feed. Okay? So if you find that the power feed roller bearing is not rolling anymore, and if you happen to have a vise and uh, let's say you could knock this roll pin out of there, you can actually change the roller bearing. In this case, what we're going to show is just if you're replacing the whole carrier, which is what we recommend. These things have a tendency to wear on the same schedule, and they're subjected to the same kind of stresses in terms of dirt and grime that are coming up from the, uh, from the, from the drain. So we actually recommend if something is getting a little tight, replace the whole carrier. The part number for that would be a POMR200, or if you have a rental machine, a POMR200R, as in rental. And it just slides in like this. Okay. Then we put the washer back in, which again is designed to push this a little further in so it makes contact with the, uh, uh, with the cable. 
and then we can reinsert the, the snap ring. Now sometimes the snap ring doesn't actually click into place. You just take this and, and push the whole piece out a little bit until you hear that clicked. This one actually went in fine. But if, you're, if it's just sitting there on the rim, take your fingers or take a screwdriver and push forward so that that seats properly and it clicks into place. Now you have two rollers that are exactly like what I just showed you. And then you have one roll on the top here, which is a little different because it's part of the feed control mechanism. We have a lifting spring underneath that roll pin that keeps the roller from actually dropping straight down so it's always in contact with the cable. Sometimes you want to actually loosen it up so you can get the cable in and out of the, of the power feed. So the first thing to do, we take this out. It's just a spring looks like this that we make. And then we unscrew. The feed control. Notice that there's a spring in there with a ball bearing at the end and it's all greased up. It's, it has to be very well lubricated. We'll leave that sitting right there. A washer and another carrier. Same as below. The logic is the same for all of them. It's just there's a slightly different way on how it's connected to the power feed. So we'll put this back in. Now Basically what our guys do when they're making these the plants, they put the lifting pin in first. Oops. Real life. Okay. So that will keep that from dropping all the way down. And to put the washer in. Seat that and screw this in. As a tip, you notice that I've screwed this down so that the lift pin is now inside the circle of the feed, uh, uh, the feed body. Okay, that makes it easier when you're putting everything back together again to make sure that the lifting, excuse me, the swing pins are all in the correct position. Again, real life. There we go. Notice it now it seats properly. Sometimes this will want to actually nest itself right under there. Okay, so watch out for that when you're putting these back together again. Now this, when I turn this, it swings the swing pins, pivoting the carriers, which will change the alignment of the roller bearings on the cable and make it either feed out or in or keep it at neutral. Okay, then let's put the swing pin, uh, the uh, snap ring back on. Now, notice this one, when we were taking it off, it looks like the holes are a little egged out and it's, it looks a little loose. Whereas this one is a new one, looks a little bit better. So we're going to put the new one back on. Be careful that when you're, um, when you're taking yours on and off, just make sure that uh, you, this particular uh, snap ring goes on properly. Okay, now we have fully functioning power feed again. Okay, so at that point, you just take this and put it back on the machine and make sure that you add the guide tube as well. That's very important for using the power feed device. Okay.